Well, what's up, good people? Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Blue Sports Report without you guys and you ladies. You know this does not work. Wow. The weekend is gone. It is Sunday freaking night. Man, there's not enough hours in the day. But you know what I always say? Champions are built in the offseason. It's true. Because the offseason is that chance to get yourself into a better starting point for next year. If you're showing up at training camp having to get in shape, you're behind the curve. You need to be as big and as strong as you can going into that season because once that season starts, from there it's all downhill. You're not gaining and getting better during the season. You're just maintaining and hoping that you're maintaining and getting worse at a slower rate than the other guys. Football's a marathon, and now that we've got another game, when you think about what these guys do to stay on the field, you know, when you start thinking about the painkillers and, you know, now you're getting the warnings about, what is it, Tenadol or Teradol or whatever it is, that don't take that one because it causes internal bleeding, you know, anticipating the pain. So don't take that ahead to deal with the pain. That, it, it, it's crazy. You know, the, the weights, gains, and losses that you have to make, it's like you're Miss America. You know, you, you, you know Miss America, you've got to make sure you're not gaining too much weight and everything else. That's literally what these guys have to do. And dealing with the pain and the agony, man, you know, we all look at it and think it's glamorous. But that's a tough business. And every player is one play away from the career being over. So, yeah, I believe that everything that the players, as well as myself, I'm working on getting ready for the season. Because by the time the season gets here, I can't make major changes because there's so much to talk about. So I got to get everything in place and done now. I think I've done a pretty good job at getting stuff together. But, you know, when the season gets here, I'm hoping that some of you guys will be able to come here and watch the game with us. You know, now that the COVID is kind of, you know, waning and everything else and social distancing isn't, you know, uh, is a thing of the past or soon to be. We can have some people here eating some Jobu wings, and I got the 55, I got the 65, I got a couple of 30s. Hell, I might buy a couple of, you know, 46 ones. You know. So we have TVs around. I get the direct TV. So we can have all the games going. See, that's what I'm thinking about making the experience as good as possible. And that's why I'm working really hard. It's going on 10 o'clock, and I'm just stopping for the day. So... I was reading an article, and I, I think it was from Blogging the Boys, and they were talking to one of Quentin Bohannon's um, coaches or somebody dealing with Quentin Bohannon when he was at the University of Kentucky. And what they said was, if Quentin Bohannon had applied himself better to his weight that he would have been a third round draft pick but his weight was was an issue and at Kentucky he played about 350 and played well you know we drafted him in the sixth round and I'm trying to figure out how I feel about the statement because they say if he had applied himself and got his weight down under control a little bit better that he probably would have been drafted like a third round pick. And as a third round pick as a nose guard, you, that, that's high. That's high because nose guards are, are, are like me. You know, I'm a dinosaur. I was a nose guard. You know, don't nobody want me no more. And like fullbacks and nose guards are, are specialties that not too many people look for. You know, you, you got a certain set of skills that make them very, very effective at that one thing. And that is lining up on the center right here, or a little bit here, or a little bit there. So I'm trying to figure out how I feel about this. Because one way you look at this and say, he's come in, and he's already lost weight where he's down to about 325. So, you know, what that 
person at Kentucky said he's doing now for the Cowboys. He's already getting that discipline where he recognizes I'm in the NFL, which means not for long. And if I want to stick, I've got to do more than what I did in Kentucky. Because in Kentucky, he was a grown-ass man among boys. In Kentucky, you're not facing the cream of the crop like in the NFL. You could be just a big bully, you know, where you didn't necessarily have to be that athletic guy. But the thing that happens when you get to the NFL, you're not playing, you know, Sister Mary or uh, Christian Mary, Sisters of the Poor or whatever it is, okay? You're playing the best players that you played in college every week. And it seems that he's recognizes, or the Cowboys have said, yo, bro, we want you, but you got to lose that weight. You know, we saw Don Terry Poe, who was about 380 last year and couldn't move. So he's lost that weight. So does that mean the Cowboys got a steal? Because he was playing heavy and not focused on losing that weight, and now he's more focused? And that he'll have that talent of like a third round defensive lineman? Or do we need to worry that he didn't recognize or take seriously what he needed to do? You follow what I'm saying? Do we need to worry that, you know, weight could be an issue? Because look, Lord knows, I'm the last one to be talking about some weight because. You know, I, I've been I've been bad on my keto. I'm a fat ass. I wish I could have weighed this much when I played football at JMU years ago. You know, I was 220 soaking wet and wishing I could get to 230. And I was eating every, every everything. Oh, my God, the food at JMU was incredible. Man, the hot fudge sundaes. Oh, man, they had the, the, steak, uh, the steakhouse that you could go to twice during the season. But then you had the pizza line, the hamburger line. Oh, my God. Oh, the omelet line. Okay, I, I digress. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm hangry. Hangry. I am going to take that the Cowboys got a steal. I think that that may be the better way to look at this, that the fact that he just got drafted two months ago by the Cowboys. No, no, not even two months ago. No, five weeks ago by the Cowboys. Five weeks ago, and he already recognizes that my playing weight is going to need to be about 320, 325. And he's already down to that weight. So if he's down to that weight, things work better and quicker at that weight than at 350. That... When I was out here last night, I was talking about all the things to be excited about. First thing I'm always excited about is waking up in the morning and being alive. Uh, that, that, that tops everything. Uh, that, that, that right there, waking up alive, tops everything. But one of the things I'm definitely excited about is watching the defensive line. Quentin Bohannon the Canadian bulldozer, Tristan Hill. These young guys that are big, but for their size that are quick and that are strong, and now that they have a younger Rod Marnelli teacher. Rod Marnelli was a great teacher of defensive line. I just think that Rod Marnelli started getting a little older and got a little more cautious. I think Dan Quinn will throw caution to the wind. And he's going to turn those dogs loose. And I think it's going to turn this defense around. Hope everybody had a great weekend. The weather's gotten hot. The cicadas are really coming out. Stuart Morrison is busting a hump on our Discord channel. That's right, Discord. I'm working on getting the other channel together. 
if you like woodworking, if you like old houses and all that, check out Joe Boo's Day Job Homes. That's my other channel. I'm trying to build it up a little bit. Start putting content on there that um, This channel, I love it. I love it. This channel, though, all the videos I do, all the videos I do have relevance for about two days. Maybe you'll turn back to them later on to say, see what I told you back then? But the reality is, is this video I'm doing right now, it's going to get all the views it's going to get in the next 48 hours. And after that, I could delete it and nobody would care. My other channel is that channel where I put stuff that can be relevant at any point. It's me showing you how to patch your roof. You can go back there and it's not going to change in the next two, three years. When I post stuff about the red brick house, a house that's 201 years old, and that I'm becoming a link in the chain of it and trying to save it, well, maybe 30, 40 years from now, I'm dead and gone, and somebody else has the house, they'll go back and they'll look and say, wow, I can't believe this place was in that bad of shape, and this guy saved it. That'll live on. That's kind of like my legacy channel, so to speak. Stuff that will be relevant beyond just the headlines. I give Shannon Sharp a lot of grief, but he said something that will always stick with me, and that is every day you are writing your eulogy. And I want to make sure that I got a damn good one. Alright, y'all. God willing, Tomorrow morning, don't sleep on the Dallas Cowboys. And tomorrow night, our Monday night live stream. I'll see you guys, I hope, then. Peace out.